A very good evening and welcome to Cricket Fanatics magazine. And this is your daily show, your exclusive interview. I'm your host, Khalid Maidin. And this is the show where we're going to be have an interesting guest on the channel. It's his debut on the show. He hasn't been on the show quite yet. And I've been waiting to have a chat with him. I was going to catch with, up with him after the show. I mean, after his performance, that specific show that you saw now that we played you from SA Cricket Talent. So please go subscribe there to the Verna's channel. Thank you for the highlights reel over there. And I thought I was going to talk to him after the game because I was live and I got to watch this innings. But things went mad and crazy, so I didn't get opportunity. And I thought, let's sit down and have a conversation with him. It's going to be a lot better. So before we get going, before we get started, this is a couple of things that I want you guys to please do. Please subscribe to this channel. Click that notification bell, please, for all future videos. Um, you need to put the notification on to know when we go live for every single video, guys. So please click that. Also, download the latest issue of Cricket Fanatics magazine monthly. Every issue is 100% free straight to your inbox every single month. The link is on the screen as well as in the description. The latest issue is now currently um, available for you guys to download. And, and I'd like you guys to actually go ahead and download it. It's an excellent issue. It's about winning mentality. Um, so it's very important that you guys go and check it out. Um, we've had Marco Janssen on the front cover. The earth is for you guys right here. So it gives you some insight from Gary Kirsten, from a lot of people um, that will be giving their insight into becoming a winner, getting over the choking mentality, all of those type of things, et cetera, et cetera. So please go and download the latest issue of that as well. Then if you want to help us grow and promote South African cricket, please become a patron today. The link is on the screen as well as in the description. All the people that are watching and tuning in on Facebook, please head over to our YouTube channel, subscribe for daily videos. We'll only do a couple of shows on Facebook when we think that it is necessary and today i think it's 100 necessary so click fanaticsmag.com as well to go and see all features and news updates and match reports and all of those things, type of things as well so let me bring on the guest it's time for brad to join us welcome to the show brother how are you doing first and foremost <laughs> yeah i'm good thank you very much for having me khalid yeah i'm i'm doing well thank you awesome man so i got to watch your your innings and I, I really enjoyed every single moment of it because given the importance of it, I know it was a difficult uh, mm. day for, for the Dolphins, especially the top order struggling. And you came in against possibly one of the best attacks in the country at the moment, experience, space, left arm seam, swing. They have everything in, the, in that department. And you came out and you hit 100, a very special 100 that I really enjoyed. So can you first talk me through that performance, what went through your mind? And etc. And how do you prepare yourself mentally for that particular game? Um, you know, to be honest, when I was sitting on the side and we just and all the wickets just started to fall, uh, I, and when I came in so early, it was just, it, everything just happened so fast. I didn't really have time to think about it, and uh, I didn't even know what the score was when I when I got to the crease. I only found out after the game that we were twenty four for five. I didn't even know it was that bad. I just I just I got to the crease so quickly. I didn't have time to think about it, and I, I don't know when. When you're in a situation like that, it's. I, I looked at it as, a, as an opportunity to do well because if if you fail, it was just a bad team performance from obviously the whole team. But if you manage to pull it out, then it's just a massive opportunity to to get your name out there and and do something do something good. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, I, you don't you don't really have much of a choice of how you want to play. It's sort of just when it's a situation like that, you you forced to you either just you sink or swim. It's gonna it's gonna happen or it's not. You have to just play out the overs or, and get some sort of score. It's not like you're out there batting and you trying to assess the conditions. Is it a two fifty? Is it a three hundred wicket? It's literally just about batting the overs, and that's what I was telling myself. And and yeah, I managed to to get through to close to the end of the innings and score some runs yeah so it's interesting that i'm picking out that technique over there because i've spoken to quite a few guys during the four day period four day cricket of course um obviously this is like almost the first round of the one day cup so i haven't really had an opportunity to speak to everybody quite yet but with regards to the four day competition a lot of the guys that are scoring big were speaking about their different methods that they they face to score big um, I've heard people say that they uh, don't look at the, the milestone itself, for example, 100, but they'll look at 140 maybe as an as an aim and then try to push 140 that puts the milestone out of their head. So they, they, mm -hmm. they're constantly thinking that. Then there's other guys that just say, 
bat time, bat 30 minutes, bat 40 minutes. So you mentioned over there that you bat overs. Is that is that how you normally take it when you try to bat big? Um, you know, I, I'm also more of a time guy, but, but in 50 over cricket, it's a little bit different. There's, there's more stages to yes. 50 over cricket. Um, but when you come in a situation like that, you're almost playing four day cricket, just with a white ball. And mm. so it was, it was literally just about batting time and, and just waiting for it to get easier. Cause it always does. It's just the, when you're in that moment, sometimes it doesn't feel like it would. But yeah. it always does eventually get easier, and that was what I was telling myself that you just got to get get through that first yeah. initial stage. Okay, excellent. I've got the most important parts out of the way right now, so let's get into your life story a little bit. I, I want to get to know you better. That is the title of this. Um, I want to I want to hear how you got introduced to cricket, uh, and and what was the progression for you like um, in the beginning stages before high school. Um, I've been playing cricket. I think since I've since I could walk, I, I've been playing backyard cricket i've been uh, i remember i used to like strap uh, like knee pads on my knees and then practice fielding inside with, like on tiles so i could slide and stuff and uh, my dad i remember used to take me to the beach and he would hit tennis balls at me and so i could uh, practice fielding on the beach and I don't know, i've just always loved cricket ever, ever since i can remember and uh, yeah so then i started at Mshlali, uh prep school and played through the years there and then eventually went to Kersney, uh, Kersney College. And I, I only made my first representative team at KZN under 17. And then uh, made the Coquit team. Um, after that, then <clears throat> first out of school, I played a season in the UK uh, in Somerset. And then I came back and I joined the Dolphins Academy. And then just progressed through the ranks from there. I was in the academy for, I think, a year, maybe a year and a half, and then uh, made my B-side debut. Um, <clears throat> and then played in the B-side until it fell away, what was it, last yeah. year or a year or two ago. Um, and then and then it's, the Colts cricket came as a replacement. And then, yeah, I played okay. a couple of the Colts games. Um, and then I made my Dolphins debut last year in the One Day Cup, uh, right yeah. at the end of the, at the season when we had been knocked out already, the Dolphins, and then I was given an opportunity. Yeah. And then, yeah, given another opportunity at the start of the comp this year, which is nice and very, very happy to have taken an opportunity now. Yeah, of course. So I'm going to get to some of the fan questions as well. Um, uh, Lee Claire wants to know, how was it attending Kersley College? <clears throat> Yeah, I, I, I love the tending because I boarded there. I did weekly boarding okay. and just, just the, so I loved just like the camaraderie you get with like being around your mates 24 seven and, and stuff like that. And then facilities at Kersney are obviously really good. Um, we had an indoor center with nets and bowling machines and stuff. Uh, so I had a couple mm -hmm. other keen cricket mates that we would always be training with. So um, it just provided a good platform for me to to just get better. Mm -hmm. And with regards to the Colts and the Academy, I would like to little, hear a little <clears> bit more about that, what that experience was like. Um, and also the com communication between you, for example, and the head coach of the Dolphins. Is there constant communication mm. with the guys that are on the fringes, that are about to make their debuts, etc., or have made their debuts already and maybe never had a chance after that? Yeah, there is communication. So now uh, the coach of the Dolphins is obviously uh, Imran Khan. And I remember um it was probably yeah i was in the academy so it was in one of my first years of the academy he came on an academy tour with us uh but he obviously wasn't the head coach of the dolphins at the time um but he came on an academy tour with us uh we went to potch and <clears throat> i scored 100 on that tour so wow. he, he sort of saw me um from then that i had potential and then <clears throat> Yeah, so then obviously from that, there is communication. So when he got his uh, head coach role, there is communication from him down to the academy boys and uh, Colts boys and just like sort of communicating what needs to be done to progress to the higher levels and um, how much work needs to be put in, all the performances that you have to put in. And, and yeah, I just progressing from the academy level to higher levels. I think it's a, it's an important step. I thought in my personal game, 
because yeah. when you're playing academy cricket and stuff you are you're not playing at stadiums you're playing on outgrounds and stuff which can often not be they can be trickier wickets and mm. you're obviously not using kookaburra turf balls or something so you're using <laughs> softer balls and yeah. it can it can be it can be a difficult thing to score runs on those grounds and mm. but it, it forces you to learn you have no other choice if you want to put performances in you have to score runs it doesn't matter where you're playing and um so it, it just creates the mentality that you can't you got to control what you control and you can't control the pitches you play on the fields you're playing on and you just ha you have to if you want to succeed you have to put performances in and i think that mm. has helped me a lot in understanding my game and how to score runs and different wickets and stuff. So I think uh, the academy system, cult system in that aspect has helped me a lot. Okay, that's excellent. Was there a period between high school? Because I, I've spoken to quite a few cricketers that have, have mentioned this, um, that there's a period maybe between high school and, and especially if you've played all the levels, gone through the system, gone to Kaya Majola Week, etc., all of the Coke Week, etc. And, and then you get to that stage where you, almost kind of become a professional or at least in matric you'll decide what you're going to do mm. with your career where, where did the hardships come in for you were there were there hurdles that you needed to overcome or a moment maybe that you that you discovered or, or went through where you were like oh i might need to give up cricket here or i maybe need to do something else did that did you ever face something like that or any hardships that you can tell me about um yeah when the so my biggest challenge i thought was when the b-side cricket fell away and I was still quite new to B-side. So I, I'd been with the KZN Coastal team for one full season. And I hadn't played every game. I was in and out of the team. I was, I was doing all right. I, I scored uh, 100 that season and, and then a couple performances here and there. But I'd only played one season. So my name wasn't really out there. And then COVID hit. So uh, there was no more B-side cricket for like a season or two. And then B side cricket fell away. I didn't really have an opportunity to to properly get my yeah. name out there. And then um, when Div One, Div Two came about, I didn't get a contract uh, at any of the Div One or Div Two teams. And mm. then it became like cheap as how am I how am I going to mm. progress into one of these teams now if I'm not getting looked at here? And also now when there's Div 1 and Div 2, there's obviously no Colts cricket on at the moment either. So it's just game time became really difficult and and trying to get yourself out there. Was just There wasn't much cricket being played and I was thinking, ah, oh, how am I going to do this now? Do I need to be thinking about something else? Do I need to be thinking about some other job or something? Um, so yeah, that, that was quite difficult uh, for me, but... Um, I had a couple of positive chats with um, some of the staff at the Dolphins and just had to be patient for a, a, another season or so. And then luckily got an opportunity here just because uh, I think the Dolphins have been a really strong team for a couple of seasons now. We've had a couple mm -hmm. international call-ups mm -hmm. and that's open doors now. So it's, that gave me the opportunity now this past weekend to be able to get a game and mm -hmm. just happy to take that opportunity. So, so what do you do mentally in that period of waiting? Like, do 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 you are you a vision a guy that visualizes and pictures yourself maybe going into the middle mm. and, and scoring big runs, etc. How did you like? Because I mean, for me personally, if it was me, and and I was sitting on and not sure what's going on, and then all of a sudden you get an opportunity, the pressure is one hundred percent on you because you have to go out now and perform if you want to stay there. So, how did you deal with that mentally? Yeah, there is a lot of pressure. I I, I remember when I was when we were playing the Power Rocks on Friday night and I was sitting there on the side and the game started getting close and I was next in and there was still quite a few runs to get. I was, I was, I don't think I'd ever been that nervous for a game in my life. But then, I don't know, when you get on the field, everything just sort of like quiets the mind and I just, you just, I just, I don't know, you just zone out and you only have, I mean, you're only thinking of what you have to do. But then when I'm not, when I'm not playing a game and just like thinking about cricket i think about cricket a lot and yeah i do i visualize i visualize like successful moments i visualize like scoring 100 scoring 150 and just thinking about how that feels and and stuff so it, it just training myself to like that's that's the goal it's getting to like batting for a long time yeah. getting those big milestones getting those big scores and 
um yeah so i visualize that and then I, i've also watched um quite a lot of videos and i and i've read um uh, this guy his name is david goggins he's um he's a i can't say just uh he, he's a navy seal and a couple other things but just his sort of mindset to to life and uh, overcoming challenges and stuff is just something that I really like learning about and just understanding that we're getting a small understanding of how he does it and just like whatever's put in front of you if if, it, if you want to succeed and you get challenges the only way you succeed is to get through those challenges and just figure out a way <laughs> so he yeah. that's been quite a quite a successful thing for me just for like mental training really I'm, yeah I'm laughing because yeah, uh, there's there's literally a lot of people that have spoken about that. Um, the obstacle is the way, you know. Um, yeah. When the when the obstacle is there, you go yeah, through the is. obstacle to get to the good side. So, I like that. Um, it's a nice a nice um, frame of mind and the visualization too. Uh, if you want to be successful, that's mm. that's what you got to do. I mean, for for many years, I was I fought for South Africa in cricket, and that was um, I'm not cricket in judo. Sorry. <laughs> I did South African judo for a long time, and and visualization was because it's a, as well as individual component to it, like just like cricket yes. as well. Visualizing yourself doing those things really helps you feel that moment when you're on the. And it takes the nerves away, yeah. kind of as well. I feel. So let's get into yeah. some more. Um, let's get into some more questions over here in the comment section. Um, let's start with Raul. Wants to know what would you say is your strongest suit, your batting or your bowling? Uh, it's definitely my batting. Um, yeah, I've always been a batter predominantly, and then I've been going to the UK for a few seasons now, and that's that's really helped my bowling. Uh, I've put on a yard or two of pace as well, and I'm definitely working to become a genuine all rounder. But definitely at the moment, I'm more of a batter. Okay, excellent. Um, when it comes to this one, thank you, SA Cricket Talent, for actually doing the, the, the video at the intro as well. How did you enjoy your time playing for Bath? I I've, I love my time playing for Bath. The, the the whole setup at Bath is just unbelievable. They 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 so keen on just helping cricketers and helping people just get active, and they've built an indoor center at their at their ground now. So when I'm there, uh, they have ball machines that feed themselves and I, I have access to that indoor whenever I want. So uh, I was training there uh, pretty much five days a week and then playing Saturday, Sunday. So just the facilities and the, the opportunities that they provide everyone at the club to get better is just it, it, it's as close to a professional setup as you can get. And at club level, it's just incredible. And then just learning your game when you when you're there, um, like as a pro, you, there's there's pressure on you to play to perform at club level, even though it's club. So it is a easier standard, but there's still pressure on you. And just to understand your game and in, in English conditions and stuff like that, it's it's really really helped my game. Yeah, um, literally as a follow up from that is uh, how strong is club cricket in compared to South Africa? Um, I would say. Like top teams in South Africa will easily complete compete with top club teams in the UK, but the depth in the UK is yeah, a lot okay. better than than what we have here. There's just, there's so many leagues and there's so many teams there in the UK. Um, yeah, so there's just a lot more depth. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay, from your experience of playing at Kingsmead, has the pitch changed over the years, and if so, how? Um, I wouldn't say I have the most experience of playing at Kingsley. I've, I've yeah. been playing there for probably four, four years, maybe five years. And mm. in my experience, in my experience, there's sort of two halves of Kingsmead. So the, I'd say the left side, if you're in the change rooms, looking at the field, the left side is more of the batting side, the right side, is more of the bowling side. I don't know. Just that's what sort of the scores tend to tell us. Mm -hmm. But um, in terms of it changing since I've started playing there, I, I don't think it's changed mm. Not necessarily. Yeah. No. yeah, good. Okay, um, Robbie Franick is a Dolphins high performance coach. How is it working with him? Mm. I, I'm, I love working with Rob Franick. He's just 
the way that he talks about cricket and the amount of experience that he has and just the type of player he was, he, he finished games prolifically at domestic level and that's what got him to obviously play for South Africa. But you know, just the way that he talks about the game and um, just how to play different situations and he, he sort of talks about it in a mindset that I resonate with and just like mm. there's no – when you – how I said about the challenges when you get presented something and you want to do well, there's no, there's no other route. You have to yeah. overcome that challenge. And he's very big into that. So I, just the way he talks about the game, I really, really enjoy and I understand it well. So I, that I really enjoy working with him. Okay. Excellent. And then who is the fastest bowler in the KZ in club scene currently? Do you know that? Fastest bowler. Mm. I'd say I'd say he's in so he's in the HP with us. His name is Shlompo Modamakani. He's a right arm okay. quick bowler. He's 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 skiddy. Um, he gets onto you a lot quicker than people think. So he's he's one to look out for. I'd say. Okay, excellent. And then finally, from from Mr. Cricket Talent, do you have aspirations to break into the four-day first-class side for the Dolphins? I'm taking it you're going to say yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That's. That's a non-negotiable. So you have to, just especially when you're young. You, I, I don't think it, if you're not like one of the one of the world dominating players at a young level, you got to be learning your game in all formats. It's, it's just way more beneficial for later on in your career if you sort of understand your game. If you, I just think if you can perform in four-day cricket, you can perform in in one day cricket and T20 cricket as well. You just understand your game so much better if you a top performer in four day cricket. So that, that is definitely a challenge I'm, I'm keen for, um, just, just for that belief that you can, that you can do it in, in tougher conditions and just for longer periods of time. So yeah, I'm definitely keen on playing four day cricket. Okay, excellent. Last one from me. Um, when it comes to cricketers that you admire or model your game mm -hmm. on, who are the players that you look up to and that you've followed over your career? Um, I wouldn't say that I've modeled my game about someone that I've watched. I, I, I don't know. I just, I've worked out a way that works for me and a game plan that works for me. I, I think that sort of suits everyone differently. But when I was growing up, I really... Um, looked up to Sean Pollock. He was one of my, one of my idols growing up. And then now I'd say, um, I love watching, uh, Marcus Stoinis play. I love watching Mish Marsh play. Um, just those sort of cricketers. I just think they, they, it just looks like they're having fun when they play and, uh, they just play an exciting brand of cricket. And I just, I like watching the, uh, those guys play. And, and how do you move yourself into more of an, uh, do you have a plan to move yourself into a more attacking minded type of cricket? I mean, you, you are quite attacking ultimately, you know, mm. it, uh, it seems to me that you know how to um, adapt your game according to situations. But when it comes to it, learning your attacking side of things, what sort of techniques do you do? Um, what do you do in the nets to try and improve that, etc.? cetera? Um... Yeah, I do. I think I do have that power game, and I do have that boundary hitting game. And naturally, I feel like I'm quite a quick scorer. But like uh, coming from academy and into B side yeah. cricket, I opened the batting quite a lot. So then, I sort of had to understand and build a game on getting through a new ball uh, period. So I, I have that game as well. I feel, and um, and then in terms of like training that boundary sort of hitting uh, for me it's all about just like not opening up too early so it's not like forcing your so if you're right hand batter not getting your right shoulder and your right hip through the ball too early then i feel like I, i've miss hit a lot and so it's just staying side on and trusting that you have the power um to clear the boundary or just to find gaps in good positions rather than just trying to hit the ball as hard as you can so for me, it's it's sort of that, just engaging that front shoulder. Um, but yeah, I, I I'm naturally score quite quickly, so I think yeah, that sort of helps in going up and down the gears. Okay, cool, excellent, Brad. I know you you have some something to go, so thanks a lot for joining us. I'm hoping that we get an opportunity to talk more now that you've come on the channel once. I don't want it to be the only time. <laughs> I yeah. hope you can join us on other shows no, as well. No, anytime. <laughs>
Okay, awesome. Man. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this episode, everybody. Um, thanks for, for watching. Please do all the things that I've asked you to do at the top of the order. For example, I want you guys to obviously go to download our latest issue of Cricket Fanatics magazine. It's a very important issue. I think it's a, a nice way for to us to get over what happened at the World Cup, of course. Um, it was a sad time, heartbreaking. So this is a type of magazine to get you over that. I'd also like you guys to please subscribe to the this channel as well, but also become a patron if you want to help us grow and promote South African cricket. Link is on the screen as well as in the description. Brad, thank you a lot to all the fans out there that have been watching. Please, the guys on Facebook, go over to our YouTube channel and subscribe there too. Thanks a lot for coming and watching. Brad, good luck for the rest of the season, and I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Take care, everyone. Peace out. Thank you.